We've got an addiction to oil in this country, coconut oil. It's good for your hair, for your skin, for cooking, for mental health, for everything. Is this real though, or just another fad? Hey everyone, thank you for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. Is it just Facebook, Twitter, and everyone I know, or are people actually cuckoo for coconut oil? In the 1980s, coconut oil was considered terrible cholesterol-causing junk. Yet in 2002, the New Statesman published people who eat coconut oil in place of other vegetable oils could be free of degenerative diseases, have a healthier BMI, and live longer. And there's a rumor that it can even cure Alzheimer's. Lucky for us, science has spent some time looking into it. A coconut isn't a nut at all, or a fruit or a seed, actually. It's a droop, like a peach or an apricot. Coconuts on trees have that fleshy bit around them, each containing a single brown pit or stone, which is what you would buy in the store. We call that a coconut. Coconut oil is exactly what you think it is, a result of processing that white meat of a coconut, the endosperm, to extract its oil. There are a handful of ways people accomplish extracting that oil, but they all end up drying, boiling, or pressing its flesh. The change from the 1970s and 80s to today is coconut oil production has gotten a lot better. Virgin coconut oil wasn't available then, and instead it was a highly processed oil product. But is this today product any better? Processed coconut oil contains 92% saturated fat, butter is only 64%, and both beef and pure lard are only 40%. Unlike animal fats, coconut oil doesn't contain cholesterol on its own. Instead, it influences cholesterol in the body, which is manufactured by the liver. Saturated fat causes inflammation in the blood vessels. So we should keep an eye on it because consuming a little coconut oil is gonna have a large impact on saturated fat intake. Coconut oil also contains medium chain triglycerides, or MCTs, which are also processed by the liver. The main MCT in coconut oil is called lauric acid, which is associated with increases in HDL cholesterol, that's the good kind, and is associated with decreased body fat. But it also raises LDL cholesterol, the bad kind, which causes heart problems. According to Dr. Walter Willett of the Harvard School of Public Health, Overall effects on health cannot be predicted just by the changes in LDL and HDL. And there just hasn't been enough time to do long-term studies or figure out what the true benefits or drawbacks of the oil may be. In 2011, a molecular biologist from the University of California, Davis, told the New York Times, there is no concrete scientific data yet to support the health benefits of coconut oil. So far, this new coconut oil fad seems to be driven by hype more than actual information. People hear the media spout its health benefits and then throw it on all their foods. But moderation is actually more important with something like this. Chances are too much is gonna cause more harm than good. Sure, the HDL boost is nice, but both soybean and olive oils lower LDL and raise HDL at the same time. And there are other compounds in the dregs of this droop which may affect the body in other as yet unknown ways. With regard to Alzheimer's, Coconut oil has no scientific evidence to support it, but there is a book written by a pediatrician about her husband's experience with Alzheimer's. What we do know is coconut oil works better for baking as a substitute for butter. Vegans have tested that for us, but while coconut oil might be better than the saturated fats in meats and butters, its benefits are not as proven as the almighty olive oil. What do you think about coconut oil? Do you use it? What for? And if you'd like, check out this other video on kale. In terms of nutrient density, other leafy greens like chicory and Chinese cabbage bested the super popular superfood. You can click on the link in the description to watch that video and please subscribe for more D News.